Okay everyone, I'm doing my pellet prep. I've got a little session coming up where I'm fishing the uh, banjo feeder or hybrid feeder, whichever way you want to call it. Um, and I wanted to just show you how simple the, the preparation is for the, pay, for the bait. Now, I will say, this is for the banjo feeder rather than the method. And I do think it is different. I think with the method feeder, it's important to keep the pellets um, not swollen up, um, almost firm in the middle a little bit, and then maybe even use a, a binder or something like a just a fish meal ground bait just to help it bind on the feeder. I think it's very different. I think when you're fishing with a method feeder, you've got to try and compress the pellets onto the feeder into a firm block which then break down. Whereas I think with a banjo or hybrid style, you want them almost like soft, fully expanded, and then you can sort of push them into that bowl of the feeder, uh, and then they just open up lovely. So I think it's a slightly different uh, preparation. That being said, if you do this for the method feeder, it will still be okay. Um, but I would, I would stress that for me, this is better this preparation method is better for the uh, banjo hybrid style feeder. Let's just call it the hybrid. Um, no, now that I'm no longer with my former employers. And uh, uh, so let's just call it hybrid feeder. So this pellet prep, I believe, is best for that. Now, let's first talk about the pellets themselves, which um, obviously this depends on whether you go into, I've got some like props here, I can't believe I will prepare them. Now, this depends on whether you are fishing uh, fishery only, only pellet water or whether you're fishing somewhere like I'm going tomorrow to Boddington. Um, where you can use whatever you like. And there's, I know there's still a lot of places where you can use whatever pellets you want to use. So let's just pretend that fishery pellets don't exist. And this is what I would use if fishery pellets didn't exist. Uh, obviously, if it does, then you've got to tailor that to suit. Um, but generally, the fisheries use one of two types of pellets. Now we've got screttings, which are uh, Blake selling carp pellets, but they're screttings. And then alternatively, you've got coppins. Again, dead handy. I actually bought these last week because they were good value for five kilos. Um, and they're coppins. Now, the difference between the two is that coppins are very sticky. They're a sticky pellet. So when you actually soak them up, they'll bind together almost like glue. No good, I don't think. Not on their own anyway. Whereas the screttings oh, open up, they open up into a lovely, puffy sort of texture, almost like a mini expander. And I genuinely think that the fish prefer scrapping pellets. But, um, just to flip that on its head, these sometimes when you soak them up can be a little bit too soft and spongy and you can't get them to bind. And that is where these come in. So, to soak our pellets, we're gonna mix them together but in, a, in the correct ratio. Now, I experimented and I tend to think that I use these little scoops so I don't, because I'm a nightmare. I have all these different Tupperwares and I end up filling that up with micros, which doesn't look that much, but by the time it's swollen up, you've covered it with water, which we'll show you in a moment, tap that into a bowl, you end up with eight million pints of pellets. <laughs> so I end up throwing them all away, which is no good at all, is it? Um, so I've started to rein myself in, and this is a, has it even got a size on it? It's not got a size on it, I'm afraid, but it's a small Tupperware anyway. And especially in the winter, that is more than enough for a day's fishing. And it's hardly any pellets, but trust me, it's more than enough. So get yourself some of these. I think they're, they're just brilliant. Obviously get the ones with a rubber seal because the last thing you want to do is that tip over and all your water end up all over your van or whatever. But anyway, onto the actual quantities of the two pellets. So if you can and you can use whatever you like, I suggest getting some screttings and some coppins and keeping them in storage. Like I say, five kilos of each there, they'll last forever. They'll last me so long, especially when I'm only doing one of these. Um, you can add other pellets, you can add flavoured pellets, you can add, I know some anglers like the Dynamite F1 Sweet, things like that can be really good, can be a good addition to the mix, of course they can, especially in the winter when I think you want a lot of attraction in your bait. Um, but look closely at them, you can normally tell whether they're a Screttings or a Coppins pellet, and obviously tailor that to suit. Generally they're Screttings though, so just bear that in mind, all the flavoured tax pellets. Uh, right, anyway, so I have these little measures, and what I tend to found is it's three parts screttings to one part copper, and that is great. So just bear that in mind, no matter how much you do, three parts screttings to one part coppins will 
gives you a lovely mix once they're soaked up, you'll get that lovely sort of texture and that bind. So when you put it on the hybrid, you can get it on there nice and firm. So let's do that. So let's give it three scoops of scratchings. See where we get to. Just doesn't seem like a lot of pellets, but you've got to remember you're only putting on a pound full every time, not even that. And then one scoop of toppings. And that's it. So I'm not even going to do a full one of them. Now I'm just going to give them a shake, not that you need to do that, but just to sort of mix them up. And then hopefully you can see we've got a nice blend of the two in there. And that, would you believe it, will be more than enough for my session tomorrow. So that is going to be perfect. Now, I like to add flavours and stuff like that, but I'm actually going to show you how I'm going to add the flavours at a different time. But if you do want to put them in your pellets, now's the time to do it. When we did the one at Boddington last year, where I used bovel, for instance, I actually um, used hot water, got the bovel, mixed it all together into the hot water, and then poured that onto the dry pellets, and it worked an absolute treat. Caught some fish with that, bovel was really good. Um, you could use marmite, you could use all sorts of different things. Um, the only thing I am going to add is a bit of this today. Squid brand fish sauce. Now this is like a ferment, fermented fish uh, sort of stuff. And it's really cheap. I think that from Asda is about two quid. And I reckon that that, with no carp tax on it or bait tax on it, is one of the best things you could probably add to it. It's just really salty, fermented fish, absolutely stinks. It's packed full of goodies. Just a brilliant additive. And it's something that I know a lot of the carp anglers use on the quiet and that's uh, squid brand fish sauce. I mean. You take the lid off it and it stinks, but it doesn't it doesn't smell as bad as, you, as you're thinking. But um, I'm gonna add a bit of that. But this is when, if you wanna get some flavors into the pellets, this is when you do it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna off camera, pretty much level fill them with water. Now, if I was thinking I'm gonna use the method as opposed to the hybrid, I'd probably put a little bit less water in, but because I'm using the hybrid, I'm gonna absolutely level fill it, which is gonna be perfect. Now I'm just gonna quickly give it a few little glugs of the old fish sauce. Absolutely stinks. But like I say, it's not as stinky as what you imagine. And it's an absolute bargain. Anything like that, salty and fishy. And this is a bit of a different video for me. I normally like to do a nice production, but um, this was, I was just doing my pellets and I thought this would make a nice, interesting, rough and ready video. So as you can see, those pellets are soaking that water in already. There we go. So that's it. It's as simple as that. You can go in there, in the fridge, overnight. You could do it in the morning or you could do it overnight. I prefer to do it overnight. And those will be lovely and fluffy and ready for the hybrid in the morning. So that's perfect. And like I say, by the time I've, that soaked up that water and that flavour, uh, it will set in there like a little block. And then when you fluff it all up, all of a sudden you'll have like three pints of soaked up pellets. So it doesn't look like a lot, but trust me, it goes a long way. Now, when it comes to flavors, now there's a number of, like I said, one way you could do it is get the flavor into the pellets. Um, then, as you soak in the, as you like put out the water to them. But one of the best ways is to use boiling cum. Now, obviously this depends on whether it's allowed. You can use ground bait. Um, to do this, but I prefer boiler crumb because it's quite neutral, it's not got a fishy side to it. So some venues, uh, hot, like Boddington, places like that, respond really well to like a, um, a sweet flavour rather than a fishy one, rather than something like the old fish sauce. Um, something sweet, it could be molasses, it could be um, one of these like bait booster type additives, it could be, there's all manner of sweet, sweet sort of liquids you can use. And the best way i found to add that to your pellets is to use boiler crumb. It's like a little sponge and it obviously soaks up that flavour. So you'll have seen quite a few anglers use boiler crumb in their um, meth mixes and, and hybrid feeder mixes. And I believe that that's the reason why they do it. Um, obviously it gives a nice nutritional boost because it's full of protein and goodness. But fundamentally, I think it's more of a, a delivery to get that flavour out into your swim without affecting your pellets and how they bind. So. Let's just show you how we're going to quickly do that. Oh, there's some on there now. Now I'm going to use a crusher. Now if you were doing bigger amounts, I would use um, a liquidizer. And to be honest, I would generally use a freezer bait rather than shelf life. Um, 
these are bodies that I used to chug fish in and I just so happen to have got uh, a few left. So they'll be perfect for this. I don't genuinely think that what it is matters so much. I think because you put adding flavours to it, I, I, it's kind of irrelevant. It's just a flavour carrier for me. So you could use the ringers and then they do like a fluoro one, which is quite nice because it adds a bit of colour to your mix. Um, but I just like this because I've got them. I'm just going to give them a few crushes up there. Get that rest of that out there. Like I say, you don't need a lot. And then we're left with nice crushed up boilies. And they've got like a really neutral, creamy sort of smell. Not, it's not a strong smelling bait at all, this. Like I say, it's one I've used to great effect from a chub fish in. It's, to the nose, it doesn't smell very appealing, but for whatever reason, it works. So then what I would do is then load this up with my flavour. So I could use, like I say, the squid brand, the fish sauce. I could use bait booster, which is salted caramel. You could use, you could even put like a, a glaze in there. You could use haze. You could use whatever you wanted. You could even use something really good like liquid liver, which I spoke about before. I think that, that is one of the best additives you can get. Uh, so you could use that. Um, but I'm going to actually use a bait booster because like I said, I'm wanting something quite sweet. So I'm going to get that in there. I'm just going to mix it in with things. You don't need a lot. And then you'll end up with, it's quite dry as boiler crumb when you mix it. So once that's soaked that all in, I'll then add that to me um, pellets and you'll get this lovely, sweet smelling crumb. Once that's soaked that all in, which it will do by tomorrow. Oh, it just <laughs> like a salted caramel. Um, boiler crumb and that added to your pellets is just an absolute winner because it ends up just a massive flavour boost for your bait. So I'm just, the thing about the flavours is uh, what venues to use them on and when to use them and wh when not to use them. If I was going to a venue like a Lindome, a Mayhins, somewhere like that that doesn't really see many carp anglers I wouldn't even I wouldn't even consider putting things like this on. It's not even it just use the pellets straight out of the bag for me. You could maybe add a colour to them just to stand out from the crowd, but for me, it's all about using the pellets straight out of the bag. But if you go into Barston, if you go into Boddington, places like that get fished by carp anglers just as much, if not more, than match anglers. And they put all kinds of stuff on the bait. I was gonna say a rude word then, but they put all kinds of stuff on their bait. The fish, almost like the senses have been overpowered, like the normal pellets just don't cut it anymore. So it's a good idea to flavour your bait. And I do genuinely think it makes a difference on venues like that. When you've got that kind of situation going on, I think it does make a difference. So don't be frightened of additives. Don't go nuts, obviously use it in a, in a, in a smart way, but just be mindful of some venues um, react better to like a fishy flavour and some venues work be better on a, like a sweet flavour. So, so there you go, that's simple pellet prep. Bit of a impromptu video that I wasn't, look at that, it's like setting in there like a brick, which is what you want. A uh, bit of an impromptu video, I wasn't planning on doing it, but I was just getting my bait ready and I thought, Do you know what, I'm sure you guys will love it. So yeah, so like I say, three parts scrattings to one part coppins is a good ratio and if you can't do that if you you know if you do have to use just scrattings or you just have to use coppins just be careful especially with the coppins they don't they go it can go like glue now one little trick <clears throat> if it is um coppins pellets on your venue if you soak them like that try and get them obviously before you go to the venue so if you've been and you know you're going there the next week grab a bag before you leave soak them like this just like that the day before or even two days before let them fully expand, fluff them up, and they'll still be really sticky. Now, if you don't want them to be that sticky, put them in a bag, whack them in the freezer overnight and get them out. And for whatever reason, that freezing process takes the edge off them and they're not as sticky. So that is one way to get around it. If you can only use Coppins pellets, which some venues you can, do that and it'll stop them. Be, they'll still bind around the hybrid, but they won't be like, sometimes if you just use Coppins and just use them as, as they are straight out the bag, sometimes they go like absolute glue and they never break down. So yeah, there you go. That's just a nice little uh, pellet prep video. I know there's loads of them, but I just thought I'd, I'd do one on my channel while I'm here. Uh, and like I say, this is for the hybrid feeder. 
or banjo, whichever one you want to call it. And uh, it's really simple. Three parts screttings to one part coppins and you can't go far wrong. Um, and then add flavours to something like a boily crumb or you could even use ground bait. So, so there you go. That's how I'm going to do it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.